Hi, everybody, and welcome to our Bible study for Wednesday, the 24th of March, and glad to have each of you with us tonight. We're going to open with prayer and then jump into our study. I'm going to hopefully expand and expound on what we talked about Sunday, and uh, I pray it'll be a blessing to you, and if you know Jesus as your Savior, this uh, I'm sure will be an encouragement to you. And if you don't know him as your Savior and your Lord, I pray that this would help you to uh, draw you to him and, and uh, have a relationship with him. We're going to pray and ask God to be with our time together. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we can come. And, and Lord, that we study your word. Lord, we pray your word would, would speak to us and would teach us, Lord. We pray that you would just help us in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. And again, we uh, want to welcome each one of you. And we have been <clears throat> studying on Sundays uh, or looking at on Sunday's uh, sermon series, Who is Jesus? And the first week we talked about Jesus as prophet. And then last Wednesday night we talked about Jesus above me um, and who he said he was and who he was. And this week, we talked about Jesus being our mediator and our high priest. And tonight, we're going to look at uh, a lengthy passage in Hebrews, uh, the book of, of Hebrews written to a group of believers that were kind of ready to throw in the towel. And the writer is really trying to emphasize, and if you look at uh, the book of Hebrews, many times it, it's, it seems almost uh, too repetitive because he just seems to keep uh, hammering home the same points over and over, but we do know uh, in studying education that uh, repetition leads to learning, and the more that you repeat and rehearse something, the more you'll remember it. And so he's trying to, to kind of drill down and let them know that that Jesus uh, was and is the high priest. He says that uh, over 17 times, I think, in Hebrews that Jesus is our high priest using uh, what these Jewish Christians would have known about the old system of sacrifice that God used, the old uh, covenant, so to speak, using that as a shadow picture and a shadow of what God was pointing to what God was doing uh and what he did do, and what he is um, continually doing in the work, and the final work of Jesus' substitutional death and atonement for our sins on the cross, and then also um, the continual work of sanctifying us, setting us apart for his glory and his good, and for the purpose that he's created each one of us for, and then also for the end when Jesus will return and take us home to be with him. And I'm, and that will be the completion and the, the, the finality of God's complete work um, for humanity. And I'm thankful for that today. I'm thankful for the truth in Hebrews. And we're going to jump right in in Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to start at verse... Um, verse 1, and so if you have your Bible, you may want to follow along with us. It'll be on the screen uh, above me here. So Hebrews chapter 1, or chapter 10 rather, verse, starting at verse 1. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. So here he's reminding us that the law was just a shadow, the sacrificial um, atonement that the priests did, the priests uh, sacrificing animals, and everything was a shadow picture of what was to come. The priest's garments, uh, everything was a shadow. The tabernacle was a shadow of, of Jesus Christ. We talked just a little bit on Sunday about 
some of the parallels or the uh, shadow that were pointing to Jesus in the robes of the high priest. Jesus being called the high priest in Hebrews 10 and all through Hebrews. Um, just a few uh, references that I'll mention, and I won't go into reading each one of them, but if you want to write them down, uh, Hebrews 2, 17, 3, 1, uh, 4, uh, chapter 4, verses 14 through chapter 5, verse 10, um, chapter 7, uh, verses 11 through 12, and then also um, you can continue on through 25, really. Uh, just a few there um, that he lists and reminds us that Jesus is the high priest and although the priest stood between man and God making intercession for sin sacrificing and here he says the shadows were good things but they weren't the complete thing because if they were then if if it would take care of the whole sin problem then the people would no longer be reminded of their sin because as he says in verse 3 put in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sin every year so it came back to them on the day of atonement every year they had to make a sacrifice the high priest would make a sacrifice for their sin verse 4 for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin so he's saying here that the shadow picture of what you did in the past the problem of sin and it's not to say that that thing wasn't important because it was it was what god instituted then until the time would come in god's full plan that jesus would come and take away that ritual that right but he would uh be the perfect atonement for our sin the perfect sacrifice and we're going to see that later on but you know, there's nothing wrong with the shadow, but the real is better. It's just like, uh, for instance, it's nice to see the shadow of the car, but it's a lot better to buy the new car, right? And to have the new car. Uh, yeah, we can see the shadow of the house. It proves that it exists. It proves that it's there, but it's a whole lot better to live in the house. Jesus is the house it's not just the shadow that was shown by the sacrifice of blood of goats and bulls but it is the completion of that and then he goes on in verse 5 and i believe it's 5 through 8 here that he quotes psalms 46 through 8 now he's quoting it from his bible from the septuagint which uh, for us has been has been translated from Aramaic into Greek and then into English for us. So it may not be exact when we look at it in our King James or in whatever English translation that we have in Psalms 40, but this is what he's saying. Wherefore, when he cometh unto the world, he say, a sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared to me for me. So therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. So uh, the sacrifices wouldn't satisfy. This was prophesied way back in the book of Psalms that Jesus would come and, and the Hebrew writing, writer saying, remember what the psalmist said? That these would not always be sufficient, but there would be a body that would come and then in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. That these things uh, didn't fully satisfy. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written to do thy will, O God. So who's speaking here? Jesus. Jesus spoke before the worlds began. Jesus spoke before he became a babe and stepped out of heaven and became a traded um heaven for earth to become a man and to live and to die and to be resurrected for my sin, for your sin. And he says above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. So the Hebrew writer pointing here 
uh, to Jesus and to this Old Testament, this old psalm that many of them knew that it would be something that they had rehearsed, something that possibly they sang. They knew that God was saying way back then that, yes, right now we've got to have the shadow of sacrifices, but those will not be sufficient because I'm going to send a body. I'm going to send uh, Jesus. Jesus even said, said, I come to do the will, O God. This was in Psalms way before God, before the foundation of the world. Jesus, before the foundation of the world, said, I will go and do the will of my Father. And then moving on, there's so much more we could unpack here, but in the uh, efforts of time, we'll, we'll move forward. But then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. God's going to take away the first, the old covenant, so that he can establish the new and everlasting covenant through Jesus, by which we will, are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. No more sacrifices of blood and for of goats and, and bulls and, and lamb. We are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And then watch this. This is great. This this uh, is one of these hallelujah, hallelujah moments in, in Scripture. If we have accepted the sacrifice that Jesus gave us on the cross, and we believe that, and we accept it into our life, it said, And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. So what are they doing? They're standing up in the posture of worship. That's what they had to do. In the in the tabernacle and even in the temple, God had all kinds of furniture that he wanted in there. The 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 altars, the the um the uh, uh, candlesticks, the, the incense, uh, the labors, all of those things. He had those. But you know, n there's not a bench or a chair there. The priest always had to stand. He never sat. Because sitting in their culture meant you were done. You're finished. But watch what he says. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now, a few things, and I'll go back uh, to the previous verses quickly. Um, we are now sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So what's that mean to be sanctified? what well, means to be set apart, and it also means to be growing. Uh, as we're sanctified, we're continually set apart, we're growing. See, when sin entered the world, there was death. There was no death before sin. And when we commit sin, when we live in sin, and sin is basically uh, just doing things against God's will and things that God has said no to, we do them anyway, and willfully we do them. It's not an accident. It's not a mistake. Uh, it's not something we just, oops, we fell into it. No, it's a willful action and that sin. And uh, when we accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for our sin once and for all, and we allow him to change our life from the inside out, then we are sanctified. We're set apart and we continually grow in Christ. Now, I'm going to say something here, and I don't mean it as an offense, Um and please don't take it as such, but when we are living in Christ, when we're walking in the ways that God would have us to, we're going to grow. We're going to grow. Just look at um, when we look at life, the natural life. When, when something is alive, it's growing. I learned that in Sesame Street years ago. A rock's not alive, no, 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 but a plant is alive because it grows, grows, grows. Well, when something is alive, it's growing. If we had a, a child and and the doctor says, well, their growth is stunted or they've stopped uh, growing and they should be growing or this, this uh, developmental mi milestone is not happening, then we know something's wrong, right? 
Well, if we're not growing in Christ and we're not being continually sanctified and set apart, and this is not to make anybody feel guilty um, because it's not anything I can do or you can do or that we have to try harder. Jesus died once and for all, but we also, we need to seek him every day so that we can be set apart. Now, there is sometimes that there's room for try harder in the Christian life. When God reveals something to us um, that we know we might need to do a little better on, that we might need to move up, it's not that we feel guilty. It's just that we're growing. It's so funny sometimes, um, you know, when we're, when we uh, grow as a kid, we're excited about that, aren't we? Um, me being a, a short little guy and still am, but when I would grow a little bit, they'd measure me on a growth chart and we were excited about that. They put a little mark and say, oh, look, he's growing up. And, you know, and you're, and the, if you had a mom like I did, oh, my little baby, he's growing up, you know, and, and we are excited when a child grows, grows up. And sometimes uh, as parents, you want to go, oh, stop the clock. We, 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 we miss them as babies, but we won't, we wouldn't, uh, literally want to just push them back there. We want them to grow and mature. And as Christians, we shouldn't feel guilty about growth. We should celebrate it. You know, God only disciplines and corrects and helps those that he loves and that are in covenant relationship with him. And so if he says, you know, you need to quit doing this or you need to step up here, then it's not that we feel guilty or that we compare ourselves to another Christian who's on a different uh, growth plan than we are. We measure ourselves with the word of God. And if there's something we need to, to grow on, we, we do that. So they were being sacri uh, sanctified. And then look at what it says here as we move forward. Um, from henceforth, or I'm sorry, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin, sat down. So he's now finished his work. Uh, that sacrificial work for sin, and then from henceforth, now looking ahead, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. His enemies made his footstool is one of the most quoted prophecies in Scripture. And that points to when Jesus will return. And he's not returning till all of the enemies are his footstool. And for by one offering, he is perfected forever them that are sanctified. Now, does that mean that we're perfect? No. What he's saying is, is that one offering was so perfect it was complete. Let's put that word in there. It's complete forever. And it will, it is complete and it will help us. It, it will, it will do everything uh, to complete us in Christ as we're, as we're growing. That doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean that we might not make a mistake. It doesn't mean that um, there are things in our life that we'll have to change as we grow in Christ. It doesn't mean that, but it means that the sacrifice that was given is perfect. It's perfect for those that are sanctified, that have accepted it, that are putting their faith and hope and trust in that sacrifice. And then, wherefore, the Holy Ghost is also witness to us for after what he had said before. So, the Holy Ghost, God's Spirit living in us after we've accepted Jesus Christ. It's a witness that we know what God said is true. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. And right here he's saying, we know that this is true. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds. He's reminding the, the Hebrews here that remember the Holy Ghost reminding us about what Jeremiah said in, in Jeremiah uh, 31, he said, in those days, this is the covenant that he was talking about. Jesus is the covenant that Jeremiah was referring to. I will make them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Now, remember earlier in the passage, it said that the, the priests making sacrifices and that it was a shadow of the times old and they had to continue to make them. And every time the sacrifice was made, the, the sins were brought back up into their remembrance and the priest remembered the sins. Well, look at what God does. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. The priest, the human priest could not do that, but the very son of God, the second in the Trinity, 
all God, but also suspended, uh, came to, to, to be a man and called the hyperstatic union of, of Christ, being all man and all God, all at the same time, will remember our sins no more. Now, God is, um, he knows all things. So I, I don't understand this, how God who knows all things can forget a sin. But that makes it so amazing. His word says his sin, he will cast our sin as far as the east is from the west. I love that because east and west never meet. North and south do, but east and west never does. He will remember them no more. And because he remembers them no more, that where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. So now we can continually grow in Christ. We don't have to continually make sacrifices for sin. Now, if we do happen to sin as we're walking with Christ, because his spirit will keep us from falling, but if we do happen to, and again, this is not a mistake. This is not, oops, I messed up. This is willful sin that we're saying, well, we know that we shouldn't do this, but we're going to do it anyway. And then there's also times when we do something that maybe there's an attitude of our heart. I know I've had to repent of some attitudes that I've had that are not God honoring in it. And, and God had to reveal those to me. Now, after you revealed those to me, if I continually do those attitudes without, you know, if they creep in, I'm like, oh, wait, no, Lord, I don't want this attitude. But if I continue in that, that's a sin. If there's something I know to do good and I don't do it, the Bible says it's a sin. So when there's a remission of these, when there's a remission of sin completely and God remembers them no more, then we are free to grow in him, grow in grace, to be sanctified. And then look at this promise. And this is where I wanted to get to through the whole lesson tonight. Um, Hebrews 10, 19 to 23. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Now we have an open, because Jesus is our mediator, we can now have a boldness with God our Father by a new and a living way which has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. His body, remember when he was crucified? Uh, the veil that separated the holy from the holy of holies that only the high priest could enter was torn in two. Well, now through Jesus Christ, we can go before God with boldness into what they could only think of in the Old Testament. The average person could not go into the holy of holies, but now we can go into the very presence of God. That's amazing. And having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast, so hang on to the profession of our faith. So we've, now remember, this is written to a group of Hebrews who wants to give up. It says, hold on to this. Hold on to what I just told you. Hold on to what I've written to you. Hold on to what Jesus Christ has done in your life and has uh, completed in your life and continue to grow without wavering. Why? Because he is faithful that promised. God will fulfill his promise. God cannot lie. He will do as he has promised. I pray today that you would find encouragement in this. If you've accepted Jesus, know that he's forgiven your sin and he wants to continually work in you to set you apart. Maybe you need to go back and say, as David, as the psalmist did, as David wrote, Lord, search me and see if there's any wicked way, anything in me that I need to get rid of. Search my attitude. Search my my motivation of my heart. Search the things. Uh, Lord, maybe there's uh, something that I have had all my life that I just think, well, that's just me, but it's something that doesn't honor you. Well, you've died to, to get rid of that for me. So 
Jesus didn't just, uh, he's the priest over the house of God. He didn't just die to cleanse us of our sin. Uh, it wasn't just the shadow of the house. Jesus, uh, and, and when you look at the Old Testament, you know, uh, they had to continually do sacrifices. They had to continually clean the house. They had to, if you use this analogy, uh, they had to continually sweep the dirt out or, or maybe sweep it under the rug until next year. Well, Jesus came not just to sweep it under the rug, but to get rid of the rug, to renovate the whole house, to change it all and to change you. So let us hold fast to that. When the devil breathes down our neck, when people are are, 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 are pushing against us and, and, and when we feel like we just can't go on, remember that he is our high priest, he is our mediator, that he's made a way that we can go boldly before the throne of God. I pray that's been an encouragement to you today. I pray that you would find peace in that because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is our high priest. He is our mediator. So until next time, love God, love each other, and continue to grow in his grace. God bless you.